pleasure to have you uh, with us on In Conversation. Thank you. Um, and welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. Um, you've said in past interviews that uh, you tour about uh, eight months a year, and I can't imagine uh, that traveling and touring that much ever gets old, but do, do you still get a, a vibe and a buzz about traveling to new cities and performing in front of new audiences? Yeah, yeah, because it, it grows every year, you know. Um, you know, the people's uh, awareness of the music grows every year, so. It's always some new people and new energy to intermingle with, you know, and I really, really enjoy it. after the shows. We have meet and greets so I get to really talk to and listen to the people. That personalizes uh, the connection of it? Crystallizes it, mm -hmm. yeah. It like kind of makes me or it confirms for me <coughs> what connection we had, yeah. Uh, in a time right now where new artists and, and musicians, they're being discovered through uh, YouTube and, and they're making music through their iPads and their computers, mm -hmm. um, how do you reconcile um, with what's going on now and I guess how you started off um, in your career? Um, I think it's all good. I think, you know, music is, is the sixth element. It's, uh, we need it so much and however we create it. I don't think that really makes a difference, you know, as long as it feels good and sounds good. It's not a case of uh, kids today have it easier uh, than, I guess... I don't know, that would be silly for me to try to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> they got it easier. I mean, who gives a shit, really? I mean, if you're making good music, you're making good music. And I think it's room for everybody and every kind of music and every kind of approach. I'm, personally, I am an analog girl. I enjoy uh, making live music, but I am also uh, Sarah Bellin, the digital genius. You know. And that's right. I, mean, I love that too. You're the analog girl uh, living in digital world. Right. Um, so you're active on social networks. Um, you did prep work uh, for New America Plus One and Two on GarageBand. Yeah. Um, and uh, you perform uh, and, and DJ using cutting edge digital tools. Yeah. I mean, you're almost the soul's digital queen, aren't you? No. I'm almost soul's digital queen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> That sits well with you? Sure, I'll take it. And, and how did um, working with uh, the Flaming Lips uh, and Siri, uh, how did that collaboration come about? Uh, Wayne from the Flaming Lips called me, told me that he was driving to Dallas from Oklahoma, which is about an hour and a half away, and let's go in the studio together. And I said, okay, we'd never met before. And we just started exchanging pictures on our iPhones back and forth for the whole two weeks. Any random crazy picture, that's how we knew we connected because his randomness is endless. And um, that's kind of how I knew we would connect. I really didn't hear a lot of Flame and Lips music even though I respect them as a band who have been around for the amount of time they have and being so creative and eclectic on stage. Those things are amazing to me. Have you seen them on stage? Or? Yes. No, what do you make of that random eclecticness that... I'm really jealous. I think it's awesome. I think... I wish I could do some of those things. Because they bring a bear on stage. I know. <laughs> uh, and giant hands. That's true. Uh, New America 1 and 2. Uh, these albums are just uh, such wonderful contrasts of, of politics, uh, love and, and self-evaluation. Um, as of 2012, where are you now? As far as uh, in within New America, it's part one and two. Uh, I'm on to something, something else. Those thoughts have already been expressed, you know, and they don't belong to me anymore. They now belong to the world. I'm on to more thoughts, you know, um, more experiences. I'm on to the fifth world war which is the war between me and me. You know, I'm in competition with my last level. And just wanting to evolve and eliminate, that's where I am. And you'll hear that, you know, the lyrics and the words. If you ever want to know anything about me at any given time, 
just listen to those bodies of music, it'll tell you. Does it drive you um, almost bettering or uh, I guess another would be I guess moving on or improving from what you've just done? Does it better me? Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but I know it's the right thing to do, you know, to continue to eliminate things that no longer evolve you. You know, it's uh, I'm not obsessed with it, but I do know it's a necessary thing to do. Um, for our listeners, uh, I guess the one what's in your playlist uh, at the moment, what's musically, what's blowing your mind? On my whole iPod? Yes. Musically, I've been listening to Thundercat, um, Jack Davy or Jay Davy. These are underground LA artists. I think it's something in the water in Los Angeles right now. People are very creative. This kid named Monopoly, Flying Lotus. Um, Georgia Ann Moltro, uh, Vintage Sarah material. I've been listening to a lot of Los Angeles stuff. They're very creative and um, fearless in their approach. It's fear free, the music. That's why I like it. It's more fair. Um, in, in performing here in Malaysia, um, and I guess with the number of concerts that you've done uh, right throughout your career, do you remember the first time you sang in public? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, you know, babies and fools. We don't have any conscience at all. I just felt like happy. You know, I, I was at an elementary school play, and I was playing a boy in a Christmas play because the boys had auditioned, and I wanted to audition, and I got the part. And I had a baseball cap, and I had a baseball, and I was baseball bat, and I was doing the act, and it was very natural. I enjoyed the immediate response I had from the audience, and I thought this is probably what I would be best at doing or most comfortable doing for a long time. Well, Erica Badu, thank you for being with us on In Conversation, and we hope Malaysia gives you much love, and we wish you all the best. Thank you.